This story has been recorded at an Addictive Eaters Anonymous meeting in New Zealand. You can email us at contact at aeanz.org. Hello everybody, my name is Liz and I'm an addictive eater. Liz. Um, yeah, so what it was like for me, um, well I, um, I have to go right back to the beginning. So my, in my early ch my childhood I don't remember much about, um, I grew up on a farm and there was um, lots of fresh air and outdoor living and um, lots of good sort of homegrown food. Um, my mum was a farmer's wife and she cooked everything um, from, you know, we had a cow and she milked the cow and made her own butter and, and cream and things and we also, she made all her own bread and we had roasts and, and lots of good wholesome food. And I don't remember a lot about it. I don't remember my eating terribly much. Um, it, I, I just, you know, I do remember things like picnics um, and going to the lakes and my mother's bacon and egg pies. And that was back in the day when you used to get the special Sunday bread that was sort of, it was the only time that we bought bread was, um, it was a special sort of Sunday bread that you could get that was made differently. I don't know, it was sort of melted in your mouth kind of thing. And, um, yeah, and so um, I, I remember once or twice a co comments made that, you know, I was first at the dinner table and last to leave. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, that, that, you know, I don't remember any sort of massive binging or overeating or anything like that. But I do remember um, being, when I, when I got a bit older and I started becoming interested in boys and I guess I was hitting puberty, that I became a bit more obsessed about, well, I just started to become obsessed about my weight. And, um, like, I don't, I, I was never, so I'll, I'll just make a note here that I was never actually an overweight kid. Um, I was well covered, but I, you know, I wasn't o obese or anything like that. And, and, and going into my teenage years, I certainly wasn't. Um, but I started to just think I, you know, I started to have feelings that I was over, that I was fat and, um, and just become obsessed about my body image and not long after those sort of thinkings, um, I started along the exercise path, which is when I started to, you know, put two and two together and think, well, if I go jogging, then I will um, be able to manage my weight. And um, so, uh, you know, I started off doing, you know, going for a bit of a jog when I was, I don't know, I was probably about 13 or 14. And I, I wasn't very athletic. I'd never been interested in sports my whole life. Um, I hated PE at school. Um, I'd always try and get out of it. Um, so I started doing this sort of voluntarily doing this exercise and I'd do a bit of jogging and that carried on. I think, I don't, I don't think I really sort of stuck at it, but there was all these, these feelings d deep inside of me that, uh, you know, I needed to somehow manage my weight. Um, and my mother, of course, you know, I was still at school and my, my mother prepared all of my meals. So I didn't have a lot of sort of control over what I was eating. Although I, I, I know I went through periods of time where I flatly refused to eat any dessert. Or my mother, you know, she'd make puddings. Um, and, I would, and I'd say I wouldn't want to have um, any mayonnaise or any gravies or anything like that on any of my food. And, um, yeah, and I was a bit weird about butter. And it was around about the time that um, you could start to buy fat reduced milk so like trim milk and so I, that became just a staple that I wouldn't have any full f you know f full cream milk or blue top or whatever um so that that was sort of my you know sort of mid-teens and then that carried on and I remember I left school and I got a job and um then I had my own sort of money and I remember I um I started doing um jazzercise that was when that first started coming out god I'm showing my age now um and I grew up in a small town and and there was 
jazzercise on a, one of the nights after work. I remember going to that and I got a leotard and everything and, and I got right into that whole sort of aerobics thing for the, ne- you know, for the next however many years. God. And um, it was such a big thing. And the other thing I did um, was I, I, I managed to somehow get in touch with a dietitian and I remember going along to this dietitian um, with the view of getting some sort of weight loss program and I remember her being a bit perplexed at me because I you know I presented myself as sort of relatively healthy weight in fact I was thinking I was a perfectly healthy weight but um, you know nonetheless she she helped me to um, understand calories and that was when I started down that route of counting calories and 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 being on on some sort of diet and you know, I was pretty good at being on diets. I, I'm I'm pretty extreme, so um, that that and that was when I that was sort of when I first started my first diet, and that would have been um, I was probably about seventeen or eighteen, and um, and you know it was a real calorie counting diet, and I can remember it like it was yesterday. And by God, just stay away from me. I was like a bear with a sore head. You know, you couldn't like I, it was real. Um, you know. It was just, uh, you know, there, there was no sur- nothing surrendered about that. It was just, you know, um, I can't think of the right word, but it was just, I was just, you know, really imposing my will on myself. And I was, um, you know, it was just horrendous. And I can remember during that period of that being on that diet, we had a family weekend to our, to away and there was like my brother and his wife and children and my sister and her fiance and we were doing we just had this lovely family weekend anyway and I just I you just couldn't you know I, I couldn't participate in anything because I was just so obsessed about the food and I remember just being on this diet and I had to stick to this bloody diet and anyway um so of course something like that never lasted and I, and that lasted actually a few few months and I remember um it was at the end of that summer I went to university and of course that diet just went out the window and in came no diet and um, I was at university and I and I remember being um, just, it was, I, I sometimes talk, you know, refer to it as um, free fall eating and I, I like drawing analogies, it's like jumping out of an aeroplane with no, no you've got, no, you're just falling and that was what it was like, I had no sort of plan when I was just eating, there was like no plan, no diet um, and it was just awful. And I remember those periods of time. And in that first year of my university, um, I was, that's when I left my small town and went to Wellington and um, was at Victoria University and I was in a halls of residence. So again, there was another, you know, not really that in control of the, the food that I was eating because it was all prepared for me. And I just, you know, it was just, and because I was fearful, I just, you know, ate, ate and, and, and put on weight and felt disgusting and hated myself and was depressed and um and I don't know somehow or another throughout that year I managed to sort of sort myself out a bit find a gym get back to exercising and and somehow sort myself out with my food and um go on to some sort of restrictive um regime and and come and you know and in my mind come right and so um I um yeah, and when when I when I and that year is very poignant in my mind because that year is almost sort of carved in half. The first half was just purely in the food, or that's how I call it now, like just that free fall eating. And the second half of that year, almost to the you know, exactly the second half of that year, I was back at the gym and having some sort of how somehow managing to have some sort of control over things and. Um, I'll just mention here that I do have other addictions and alcohol um, played a very big part in the management of my eating Um, because generally speaking when I was you know being a bit of a party animal and out out and about drinking um, I wouldn't the food wasn't usually so much of a problem and um, and so I was able to sort of manage it that way and of course um, because they never usually all went together but um, so that so that was just that's just in a nutshell what my eating was like and so um, going through my sort of twenties um, when I when I finished university and I was working um, I can remember the exercise became so much bigger um, because I was in a corporate environment and that was back in the day when 
There used to be sort of corporate teams entered into triathlons. I, I don't know, they probably still do that actually. Um, or, you know, half marathons. Because I wasn't really, an, uh, wasn't terribly athletic, but I used to try and, I'd get involved in all of these things. And of course it was quite good to do for, from, a, from a sort of collaborative, you know, employment perspective. But of course I took it terribly seriously. And um, so then I started, you know, I was back at the gym and doing this, you know, aerobics and um, with my leotards and, you know, biking and running. And I'd go running at lunchtime and, you know, I'd try and do something every day. Sometimes it was a good day, I'd do two things. Diana's laughing at me. Um, and, you know, and I thought it was just terribly, you know, I was terribly clever because somehow I was managing all of this uh, food I don't know. I didn't. I don't think I really thought about it, but that's what I did. Um, and of course, you know, I didn't have any responsibilities apart from myself and work. And um, and I lived right in the city, so I could just sort of shoot out and do whatever I wanted. And and of course, you know, there was a lot of drinking that went on as well um, throughout this time. And I and I managed to sort of keep relatively. You know, I was very. Well, I don't think I was particularly thin. I don't think I was ever really able to get myself terribly thin. And I remember at the you know, I'd look at people that were very, very thin, like, you know, that I'd probably call anorexic looking, and I and I know I use that term a little bit loosely, but, and I just think, God, I wish I could get that thin, you know, I really wanted to be really, really thin, but I could never really manage to stick to any eating regime or diet for any sort of prolonged length of time, because inevitably, there would come the day when I don't know what it would be, but I would take that, I'd eat that bit of cake or whatever it was, um, and it would just all go out the window. And it was usually in relation to some sort of life event. So like that year when I went to university was quite a sort of definitive um, thing that happened to me. But um, yeah, it was just different things like, you know, the breakup of a boyfriend, that was usually, a, you know, I usually lose quite a lot of weight then and I'd drink terribly heavily or, you know, different things like that. I remember when I um, met the, the man that became my husband, um, and I remember we'd been going out a little while, and of course that involved, you know, dinners out and that sort of thing, and I remember he commented on my weight after not very long, like, he, you know, he thought that I'd put weight on, and I don't think he meant it in an unkind way, um, because maybe I was a bit scrawny, I don't know, but I remember just being mortified, and so up the exercise had to happen, you know, and... Really, I can remember that, you know, and this is a long, long time ago. So, you know, I was, yeah, I mean, I, I, but, you know, that, that, that's, these are just little memories that I have. Um, so, anyway, back to the story. So when, when I um, was a bit older, I remember um, having my, when I went through having my children, and, um, you know, I was terribly, you know, obsessed about being pregnant and looking after myself, and, of course exercise stopped and of course any dieting stopped and I remember with my first child I think I put on over 20 kilos and I was heavier than than the husband and um you know and it was just wonderful I could eat just eat and I just ate and ate and ate anything I liked and uh, and um of course when she when my daughter was born I thought that it, you know with giving birth all that weight would just disappear and I think I lost about five kilos or something, and I was just mortified with this body that I was left with. I absolutely, it was just horrendous. And that was when I started into this, I got terribly depressed, and I went on to have three children, and each time it got harder and harder. Um, those children are just my, the joys and the biggest gift I have in my life today. But going through those times with this, with this um, disease in my mind, it was horrendous, and I, and you know, I, I wasn't much of a, I wasn't very successful at breastfeeding, and I remember when I, like, with each baby, I was, I sort of round about the five or six month time weaned them off the breast, and I was, you know, thank God for that, I don't have to eat anymore, I can get back to exercising and get my body back, you know, and um, I don't know if that's maybe some normal woman feel like that, but I really did, um, I just did not enjoy the body that was that was left to me and of course after the birth so each time I was able to somehow get the the weight off and get my body back after my first two children um but after the birth of my third child it just it was it was like beyond me I think it was just so hard to diet um to just I couldn't stay on a diet even for a day 
and I started to get really, really depressed, like really quite seriously. And I was, um, I was put on medication for depression and I was diagnosed with postnatal depression. Now, I do know there is a thing called postnatal depression um, and, and I may have had a bit of that. I don't know, but I do know that I um, suffered with this disease of addiction. Um, and depression is one of the symptoms, and I had it big time. And um, and of course, you know, I'm 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 not able to control my weight. Um, at this point in time, there's no more diets left. And so, um, with um, with that whole depression thing, um, and so I, I, I as part of my story, I have um, you know uh, uh, psychiatric medications come into it. So I was under the care of a psychiatrist for a period of time and um, they, they couldn't help me. I remember this psychiatrist, she put me on antidepressants, she put me on um, a couple of other things, um, sort of tranquilizing type medications and also um, clonazepam and um, sleeping tablets because of course once I got on antidepressants I couldn't sleep um, and um, and of course, what happened with me, and I, and this is just for me, is that it just it just gave me this insatiable urge to drink alcohol, and I could drink and drink and drink and drink and drink on these antidepressants, and I didn't feel drunk, and yet I couldn't walk uh, often, and um, it, so the drinking, so with the antidepressants and all the psychiatric meds, the drinking just went out of control, uh, it just got so bad. And within a very short space of time, I don't know, it was months, I was um, in, in, in Alcoholics Anonymous for my drinking. Um, and I was able to stop drinking. Um, and, um, but, but, you know, I, I was still on some of the meds. And also, I still had the food going on, which, of course, I didn't know. And I, here I was, you know, thinking I was in recovery and going to meetings and having a sponsor. And I was starting to learn about the 12 steps and recovery and, and addiction, and yet I was still in it, you know, actively in it, and I didn't really understand that. Um, so um, that carried on, um, and I, you know, I continued to go to Alcoholics Anonymous, and um, I continued to eat, and that was when um, I think I was not very long going to AA, and. I think within the first month of going to AA, I put on four kilos. It was like being pregnant again. And that, and, and I was hating myself. And I remember I would just wear, like, my husband's big jerseys and these same jeans every day. You know, I couldn't, I just couldn't sort of, I just lost all femininity. And I just, you know, and, and I was trying to stay sober, which was a big thing. You know, I, was, I wasn't drinking, which, you know, my drinking was very bad. So that, so, you know... You know, it was better than what it was, but the food had gotten just come out of control again. And um, I remember being at home sick, or someone was sick, one of the kids, and I, I, I was, I started to binge on, you know, whatever was in the house. I can't remember what it was, cake or something. And then I went to put my fingers down my throat. And I remember a time back when I was, you know, in that first year of university when I'd actually tried to, um, you know, be, a, you know, bring up the food that I'd eaten, you know, be bulimic. I was never any good at it. I just hated it. And yet here I was again in my, you know, however many years later that, you know, and I'd forgotten that memory that I'd tried to do that. And, um, you know, looking back now, thank God I was never any good at it. But, you know, so that really worried me because, you see, I'm in, I'm in AA and I've got a little bit of recovery message going into my brain. And it was sometime around this time, it's all a bit vague, that the, the woman that I had as a sponsor in AA, she'd heard about a 12-step fellowship for food addiction. And I remember being, my ears pricking up, and you know, I remember thinking, you know, oh, I'll park that one away, you know, because that might be good. But, you know, of course, I'm not ready for anything like that. And then, so that, that was, you know, that was the end of that. And then a little bit later on, that topic of conversation came up again. And she pointed out some people in AA that, that went to that fellowship. And one of those people who helped me, and who's helped me an awful lot, is in this room tonight with me. Um, and and be, later on became my, my first sponsor um, in recovery from food addiction, Diana. 
But um, I, I remember thinking, oh, okay, that's yeah, interesting. And I can't remember how with it, how much longer later after that that I remember giving Diana a call and going round to her house, and she um, told me her story. And you know, I wasn't ready, so um, I listened and thought, okay, thank you. And I went away, and I I think for about the next year, I, I, it's a year or so, I think. I continued to go to AA with this knowledge of this recovery f- program for food addiction, but wasn't ready. And of course, I stayed away from the girls that were in, you know, this food fellowship recovery program, and um, continued to to try and you know do it just with AA. And of course, eventually, um, I, I ended up having to come along. And um, and what what happened for me was that I'd won a raffle. In a um, in a raffle at one of the crash pl- places where my one of my girls went, and um, in this raffle there was a bottle of wine. It was one of those big goodie bags with all sorts of yummy chocolates and crackers and cheeses and different things. But right in the middle there was a bottle of red wine, and I remember when that came into my house. I remember thinking, I'm going to drink that wine, and that absolutely terrified me, and. And and I started eating some of the food that was that was in it. These you know the cookies and things that were in this food parcel, and it was absolutely terrifying. And I think I don't know whether it was a week later I ended up coming r- ringing Diana again and saying I, I needed help. And and you know the last like, like it, it just the 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 progression of the disease for me was so quick in the in the end. And I ended up not able to be. I just couldn't stop eating. It was literally like. I just got to a point. It's like a floodgate had opened, and I and there was just it was just absolutely terrifying. And you know, I would have. I often used to say in my early days, you know, if you told me that I had to eat grass, I would have eaten grass. Literally, I was that desperate when I came. And you know, I'm so so grateful for that. Um, it was terribly painful coming off all of the all of the sugar that I'd been, you know, the sugar and the coffee were the most painful detoxes I think I've ever been through. And yet, um, you know, I was able to do that and just keep coming. And it was, you know, it just... Um, and, and, and I was able to, to, to come off all the, all the antidepressants and, and, you know, safely with the help of a, with a doctor um, and, and, and gradually end up being what I call, you know, clean and sober and off everything. And, and you know, that's... That's a long, long time ago now. That's, you know, more than a decade and a half ago. I can't remember. It's, I think it's about 2002, I think that was, when, when I finally um, got clean off everything. And, um, you know, I, I was just I was looking back, um, you know, on, on my story and, you know, thinking through, you know, some of those things that I've talked about. Um, you know, it... Some of my behaviours were just completely, you know, they were completely insane, but deeply secretive. Um, so, you know, I was deeply secretive about what I did with food, and, you know, you didn't know about it, really. Um, and I presented myself normal to the rest of the world. Um, and, you know, it, the thing the thing for me that has been the most wonderful thing about um, coming into recovery and the programme of Addictive Eaters Anonymous has been, you know, the fellowship that's grown up around me and um, and have coming to understand and trust in a higher power that I call God. And, you know, when I came along to AA to start with, you know, it was it was put to me that I had to find a higher power. And I think, you know, being the massive people pleaser that I was, I acted as if, which is exactly what, you know, you do. Um, I had no idea. I'd never been... I'd never had any religion growing up. Um... But, you know, I was just, you know, act as if and just following following the leader, you know, a great follower. And I was able to be open enough to um, to try some of the suggestions. That was the thing. You know, I don't really know how this program works. All I know is that, you know, I was completely desperate when I came here. I was just completely broken. And I never, ever want to go back to that hell again. Never. You know... I know deep within my heart what I am. I know that I cannot manage my own food. I just cannot. I know that left to my own devices, I just, you know, I'll be back in the food. And, and, and it, I, can, I can feel what that would be like. You know, I have that feeling still in my body when, 
you know, I think back and I and you know and I don't have to eat like my partner will have ice cream or he'll have you know whatever he has um and we have it you know I buy the groceries I I, I don't I don't eat the food you know when was, my children were growing up you know we'd have all sorts of things you know I I bake um and you know and and I don't have to eat I don't have to eat it god baking was just horrendous you know it would just absolutely talk to me I couldn't keep my fingers out of the the mixture and then when it was cooked I'd have to eat it it was just horrendous and hating myself so you know I'm I'm free to do those things and I'm free to go you know go anywhere I can go you know I can go places where there's food and it doesn't talk to me and I don't have to eat it and as long as I've got my food right each day you know and I know what I'm eating um you know it, I can I can manage in, you know, I can handle anything and go anywhere. And, you know, I'm just so incredibly grateful um, to have this gift, you know, and I can, um, you know, and I've been able to raise my children um, and give them a better better, not better opportunity at, at life because I've been, you know, clean and sober and present in their lives. And, God, what a gift, you know. Um, and, you know, I didn't do it for my children. I didn't do it for anybody but myself. And really, I didn't do it for myself. I did... I came to this program and I came along and was willing because I was just absolutely desperate and that's that. I'm just looking at this. Tw- the, no, I'm looking at the traditions, but twelve steps. You know, I was I was completely powerless. I was completely my life was completely unmanageable. You know, and I had that one hundred percent. You know, before I even got here. So um, yeah, I'm. I think that's enough, and I'll just leave it there. And um, thank you all for listening.